Hello everyone, welcome to interesting case series. Today's case will be gallbladder carcinoma. I'm Dr. Raishwa here. Let's see contrast enhanced CT axial sections. Coming from up to down, we see the lung bases and we start to see the liver and the spleen. Then as we move down into the abdominal sections, now here we can see the liver in entirety and portal vein are enhanced so this is a portal venous phase now we see the spleen here and this is the stomach we start to see the pancreas and here is the pancreas and now here we can see an ill-defined isotenuting mass In the region of gallbladder where the gallbladder had to be present now there is a mass replacing the gallbladder and uh, we can see central necrotic areas which are not enhancing on contrast enhanced CT the interface between the liver and the mass is not very well defined suggesting of liver involvement as we move down we can see there is no gallbladder visualized but there is that necrotic mass itself Let's go up again to the liver porta. So what is the condition of the common bile duct? Now here we can see as we come to the porta, the cystic duct is not separately seen but the mass is abutting the common bile duct. And the common bile duct shows a dilated lumen. As we move down, seeing the course of the common bile duct, we can see it dilated entirely throughout the course and as the common bile duct is dilated we can see upstream IHBRD that is intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation more so in this case there is central IHBRD which is seen and the peripheral ducts appear more or so normal Okay, let's move on to the coronal sections of the same case. You can see liver, pancreas and as we move posteriorly, we begin to see the mass in the gallbladder fossa. You can see all those necrotic areas which we saw in axial sections and dilated CBD also is seen. Moving to more posterior sections. Here we can see that ill-defined mass which has ill-defined margins with the liver that is liver is involved and central IHBRD here we can see the IHBRD okay now that we have seen a case of gallbladder carcinoma let's discuss the theory clinical features epidemiology more commonly occurs in women in geographic areas like New Mexico Bolivia Israel etc Risk factors for gallbladder carcinoma, the female gender, postmenopausal age, uh, chronic salmonella typhi infection is one of the risk factors, smoking is obviously the risk factor, industrial exposure like rubber, automobile and metal industries, also cholelithiasis. Congenital risk factors include cholidocal cyst, anomalous pancreaticobiliary junction and primary sclerosing cholangitis are the genetic or congenital risk factors. What are the signs and symptoms of gallbladder carcinoma? They are more prone to present with advanced disease. Early presentation is very rare. They present with chronic pain, abdomen, anorexia, weight loss like any other carcinoma hepatomegaly and palpable mass can be present present with jaundice early diagnosis is usually incidental detection and serum alpha fetoprotein and ca can be raised coming to radiological features abdominal x-ray is the first modality where it can be detected incidentally it's not a modality of choice we can see porcelain gallbladder which is a risk factor for gb carcinoma we can also see radiodense calculi if present 
these are the risk factors now i'm going to show a x-ray of a case of gallbladder carcinoma where we can see abnormal contour of calcified gallbladder with abnormal air foci seen in right hypochondrium which can be due to gallbladder showing fistula with the duodenum before moving on to cross-sectional imaging we'll see the types of gallbladder carcinoma the first type is mass replacing the gallbladder entire gallbladder is replaced by mass this is the most common type of presentation second type is where there is a focal or diffuse wall thickening involving the gallbladder diffuse wall thickening something like this and or or focal wall thickening like this third type is intraluminal polypoidal mass within the gallbladder any gallbladder polyp more than 1 cm in thickness is considered a risk for malignancy. Coming to ultrasound findings, here we can see a polypoidal intraluminal mass type of gallbladder carcinoma showing foci of internal vascularity on color Doppler. And next type, we see here there is an ill-defined mass replacing the entire gallbladder. We can't see the definition of the mass very well and uh, ill-defined interface with the liver is also present also with vascularity you should look for concurrent stones in gallbladder and liver screening to be done on contrast enhanced ct the first type that is mass replacing gallbladder we already saw a case this is a similar case where there's hyperisoatenuating mass replacing gallbladder with ill-defined interface that is invasion of liver and central necrotic areas also look for lymph nodes, IHBRD and liver meds. Second type where it can present as wall thickening. It's very difficult to differentiate it from any benign causes of wall thickening. But um, here we can see the wall thickening more than 1 cm is considered significant. Look for extension to liver, lymphadenopathy and hematogenous spread to other organs third type that is a polypoidal mass type here it present as a luminal mass which is non-dependent and don't confuse it with sludge which is usually in dependent positions MRI is not commonly used as a modality of choice but uh, in case it presents as a diffuse wall thickening in order to differentiate from GB carcinoma chronic cholecystitis and adenomyomatosis we can use MRI. TNM staging is used like any other carcinoma. Contrast enhanced CT is better than ultrasound. We can see lymph nodal involvement in this. More than 1 cm size of lymph node which is heterogeneously enhancing is are the features. We can see adjacent organ involvement and distant meds also. Coming to important part of our talk that is radiological differential diagnosis for GB carcinoma. So if it present as a wall thickening there are multiple causes. Inflammatory causes for wall thickening is cholecystitis in acute and chronic both and cholecystitic abscess can present with a thick wall and non-inflammatory causes for GB wall thickening is heart failure, cirrhosis, hepatitis, hypoalbuminemia and uh, renal failure all these five are the causes for ascites which will lead to reactive wall edema important differential to consider is xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis which is very difficult to differentiate radiologically because its findings are similar to gallbladder carcinoma in all imaging uh, it presents same like gb wall thickening with adjacent fat infiltration in the form of stranding with or without hepatic involvement with or without lymphadenopathy next differential is adenomyomatosis which on ultrasound can present as focal or diffuse gb wall thickening with ring down artifacts these are nothing but proliferation of rokitansky ash of sinuses within the wall of gb and uh, MRI is used to differentiate this from malignancy where on T2 weighted imaging we can see focal wall thickening with dilated sinuses. Thank you for watching. If you want any topics or case discussions please comment below and please subscribe to Radiology Doodles.